I'm Anders Franson. I will be the main speaker today. I'm product specialist in diagnostic x-ray and have been active in this field for the past 30 plus years. Hi, I'm Rena Nilberg and I'm an application support specialist at Raysafe. And I will be helping out during the Q&A portion of this meeting. So both Anders and I are based in Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, and at the end of this presentation, you will see a brief survey in the WebEx tool. And please take a moment to complete the survey since this helps us to create useful contents for future webinars. So with that, I'm going to say welcome to you all and I'm going to turn it over to Anders Fransson to discuss Raysafe X2 for dose and CPDI measurements on CT machines. Thank you, Lena. Good to have you with us. Uh, thank you for taking the time to take part in our webinar and um, here is what we'll talk about today. Uh, I'm going to talk about CT machines, uh, then take a look at the X2 CT sensor and digging into measurements and what can be learned from the measurement readings before wrapping up with CTDI data calculation and reporting. So this webinar will focus on what you can get out of the X2 CT sensor in terms of understanding the X-ray machine and the measurement setup. So I will not go into all details about CT machines or other types of measurements. So what is unique with a CT machine compared to other types of diagnostic X-ray machines? Um, we will go through these keywords quickly in the next couple of slides to set the stage before we go into how to measure. So we'll talk about rotating X-ray tube, ISO center, field of view, couch, beam width and axial and helical scans and, and how they relate to our measurements. Okay, so first a little thing about CT machines versus conventional X-ray because in conventional X-ray, uh, what the image receptor see is the image directly. But on a CT machine, uh, the image receptor or the radiation detector gets a lot of data and a lot of data points. Uh, and a complete data set can, after collection, be used to compute a slice, slices or a 3D volume to be presented any way you like. But the image or the, the radiation detector doesn't see the image itself. So, for a CT machine to collect this data, it has to do radiation. And when doing so, it rotates. So the X-ray tube rotates, does radiation for a 360 degree rotation and rotates around the patient who is placed in the center of rotation. So we have a defined point of rotation, which is the isocenter. Then we have field of view. Um, which is set uh, by the machine to match the part of the patient that is under investigation. And that could be head or body. The patient is placed on a couch. And if it's doing the head part of the patient, then the head is outside of the couch. But if doing x-ray on the body, then also the couch is part of, of the radiated object. And then we have the X-ray tube itself that can start and stop the radiation anywhere uh, in the full 360 degree positioning. So all these things are, are things that come into play when, when measuring. Now looking at the tube from the side, we can see the width of the beam. All measured numbers for a CT machine are defined at the center of rotation. So a CT machine can capture many parallel channels of data simultaneously. For the operator of the machine, however, this is expressed as slices. So the slice thickness uh, times the number of slices is the beam width and beam width will later be used for calculations. The slice thickness and number of slices are also expressed as T for thickness and N for number of slices. 
Uh, okay, so scan modes. When scanning a patient, it can be done either as an axial scan or a helical scan. An axial scan is one 360 degree rotation of radiation before moving the couch to the next position for a new full rotation of radiation. Helical scan moves the patient continuously during the rotation to cover the same length at a shorter time. When we're talking about CTDI measurements, then we are doing that in axial mode. Okay, so now we leave the CT machine behind for a while and take a look at the RaySafe X2 CT. The RaySafe X2 CT sensor depend on the X2 base unit and its user interface. As its user interface, the CT sensor is responsible for picking up the radiation and the X2 base unit displays, controls and stores the data. The CT sensor is an ion chamber and decide for CT use. So it picks up radiation for a full 360 degree rotation of a CT X-ray tube. So this X2 CT sensor is a nine chamber and electrometer built into one unit. It has a diameter of 12 millimeter that fits into all standard holes of a CTDI phantom. The active length is 100 millimeters, and both ends at the and the center of it is marked with a white circle, and this is to help with laser line alignment. Between the lines is the active volume of the ion chamber. Just at the edge of the active volume is a built-in thermometer. And in the electronics part is a sensor for barometric pressure. This gives us a signal that is temperature corrected. And the benefit with this is that it's temperature corrected for the air temperature inside the ion chamber. Um, other instruments measure the air temperature in the room. And if we're lucky, that's the same temperature. But if you measure in a cold or a hot phantom, then the temperature in the sensor can be very different from the room. So with the pressure sensor, we also automatically correct for the air pressure. And what we get out of this sensor is a digital signal that is transferred to the base unit and is digital to avoid interfering uh, with the accuracy of the measurement because the analog signal in an analog cable, if you bend the cable, you can have a different reading. That doesn't happen here. Okay, so the X2CT sensor gives us a number of parameters. Uh, it gives up to four parameters plus waveform, gives us the dose, dose rate, and the waveform that you can see in the same little cell where we see the numbers. It measures time and dose length product. These values have conditions to measure correctly. So we'll have a look at that. And the X2C2 sensor shares properties with other ion chambers. So the whole volume must be irradiated for correct reading of dose and dose rate. For DLP, however, it's the opposite. The radiation has to be within the length of the ion chamber for the DLP reading to be correct. I'll take this again because it's very important. Dose and dose rates readings has to be irradiated out cover the whole length of the ion chamber for correct reading, while the DLP that we will use for CT measurements has to be within the length of the ion chamber. So now looking at measured DLP, the measured dose length product. 
uh, what is it? The measured DLP value is the dose in gray times the length in centimeters. And the measurement unit ends up as gray centimeters. Sorry for that. So the length of the ion chamber again is 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters. And the measurement value is related to those 10 centimeters. In a seat machine, the dose is related to length and volume, and DLP is the main parameter for these CT dose measurements. And we will cover how the parameter is used later on. So let us now combine the two, the CT machine and the RACIF X2 CT sensor, and see what can come out of it. Measurements free in air uh, with a CT sensor placed in isocenter is a way to check the X-ray tube output. Um, measurements in a CTDI phantom is a method to estimate absorbed dose to the patient, the patient in form of a CTDI phantom. Uh, the CTDI method consists of calculations based on measurements and CTDI machine settings. But we will start by looking at measurements free in air without the phantom for a while and come back to the CTDI aspects a little bit later. Some measurements are better done free in air. So free in air, you can do constancy tests, you can check the X ray tube output, you can use X2 to measure the time. Uh, so how long time the rotation takes or things like that, or create a calculation factor. We will take a closer look at constancy test and leave the other three. So constancy test with the goal to see if the tube output varies over time. We place the X2 CT sensor in isocenter and take measurements with well documented settings. So we yeah. have document, KV, MAS, field of view, the beam width, and save these settings together with the measurement data. For later comparison, the same settings and setup must be used. And that is what constancy test is all about. So now let us take a closer look at how to perform free and air measurements and what you can get out of the instrument. Here we have the X2C to sensor placed in the center of rotation. I'll point it out for you. Um, and let us here do um, an axial scan. So what you see in the dose rate waveform here is what the X2 CT sensor sees of the radiation. As you can see, the waveform is very flat. This tells us that the distance to the tube during the rotation has been the same. Which means that our position in the isocenter is perfect. So let's see what happens if the CT sensor isn't perfectly centered. Now it's been moved a little bit to the left. Let's have a new rotation. And the sensor is now sometimes closer and sometimes further away from the tube. And this is what we see as a result in the waveform now. We have a peak where the X-ray tube is closer to the sensor. Uh, and what happens then to the values? Here is the previous measurement where it was perfectly centered. So the DLP value is higher, and when it's slightly off center, we get a lower reading. So it's it's not a huge difference, but it's still important, and you can use the waveform 
to check the positioning to assure accurate measurements. So Anders, just a question about this. So when you do constancy tests, this means that when you compare your measurements from that of, let's say, the previous year, um, and you see that the numbers differ, then you can check that the wave you can check in the waveform, right? And see if it's the positioning of the sensor that makes a difference or if it's the machine, is that correct? Yeah. If if you've been lucky enough to save the waveform from your previous measurements and the numbers deviate from each other, you can use the waveform to check whether your uh, measurements were accurate at that time or not. If you, your positioning was accurate and the numbers still deviate, then you have a deviation. But if you can see that the waveform wasn't perfect, then that might be the reason for your deviation in measurement and not the output from the machine itself. Yeah. So we actually also have a question from the audience. So this measure has to be axial, right? That's the question. Right. So whenever you use a CTDI ion chamber, uh, the scan has to be axial scan. Uh, when you perform uh, free and air or CTDI measurements with an ion chamber, uh, it's the only option is actual axial scan. And uh, the values can later be recalculated for a helical scan. So you don't destroy your chances to measure just because you're using the axial scan. So this was an example from the free measure free and air measurement. Um, let us now have a look at, at CTDI. So CTDI stands for CT dose index, and it is absorbed dose to the phantom. Uh, so it consists of two things, uh, measurements and calculations. Um, the measurements has to be done with a phantom and consists of a number of different positions in the phantom. The calculations on the other side uh, has a formula and to complete the calculation, we need to put in settings from the X-ray machine, like beam width and mainly beam width. And that's why we explained beam width earlier. We'll have a quick overview of the CTDI calculation to understand why the measurements are done the way they are before we soon jump into CTDI measurements. So CT dose index. Um, in the IEC standard 60601-2-44, um, CTDI is defined. And, and there is a number of uh, CTDI definitions. We have CTDI 100, which is what a 100 millimeter long ion chamber measures in form of, of DLP. We have CTDIW, which stands for weighted, and that is the dose index value reported by the CT machine when it performs uh, an examination. Um, so CTDIW is uh, most often measured with the 100 millimeter ion chamber, where the measurement results from being irradiated inside several positions of a CTDI phantom together with input from a CT machine settings are calculated into weighted CT dose index. And it's done, uh, here is the formula described in text. So you make four, first we do a center hole measurement, and then we take one measurement in each peripheral hole. The four peripheral whole measurements are averaged into one value and it's weighted with two thirds versus one third for the measurement in the center. And this is then compensated for the nominal beam width in the formula and it comes out as the CTDI value. So no instrument can give you a CTDI value itself. It has to be a number of measurements and it has to be with input 
from, from the settings of the safety machine. Okay, so let's take some measurements then. Here we have, again, an axial scan, CTDI uh, with a body phantom in the ISO center placed on the couch and with an X2 CT sensor placed in the center hole. So let's make uh, radiation from this time through steps uh, and after a while, we start to see changes in the waveform. And here we have the complete first measurement out of the five positions. So if the phantom now was hanging there, this waveform would be completely flat. But because it's placed on the couch, we see the impact on the couch on the waveform. Um, maybe not a big thing. But it's a nice thing to have sometimes and to see what is going on and understand what is happening inside. Um, with the help of this waveform, you can also figure out where the radiation starts and stops during the rotation. So what you see here in the image is then that the dose rate goes down when the tube is below the couch, since then it passes through okay. more material before it hits the sensor, right? I'll, I'll back up, yes. So when the sensor is, CT sensor is in the center of the phantom, and now when it's below the couch, it passes through more matter uh, because it's going, the radiation goes through the couch and the phantom, and that's what we see in the waveform. And here we are outside of the couch again, and the waveform goes up in the end. Great. So that was CTDI in the center hole. Let's have a quick look at the four peripheral holes as well. We'll put the CT sensor in the top hole, the right hole, the bottom hole, and the left hole. And this gives us the five positions. We average the four peripheral ones. We add two thirds of that to one third of the center and then compensate it in a formula. This we will do in an Excel spreadsheet very soon. But first, uh, a practical example from real life uh, about what we just measured. So when we had a customer that we visited uh, and they were using XICT, uh, the XICT sensor only gives a DLP value and no waveform. And um, they learned uh, that they, they had unreasonably large variations in those readings in the peripheral holes of the CTDI phantoms. Um, they had access to, to the X-ray generator and they couldn't see any corresponding variations in MA or KV to, to explain it. Um, their conclusion was that the sensor positioning in the phantom in relation to start and stop of radiation was the reason for the variation. When radiation starts and stops where the dose sensor is closest to the tube, the dose reading becomes higher but if the radiation starts and stops anywhere else, the dose reading is lower. So their solution was to take five measurements in each hole and save the lowest reading for the CTDI calculation. This was, of course, quite time consuming. So the first time they tried the X2 CT sensor, For this, they could immediately tell from the waveform what was happening. And with the help of this, they can now save unnecessary measurements and disregard only the ones giving the wrong dose. So let's have a look at these numbers. So we have the, measure, the four measurements from top, right, bottom, and left. Here are the corresponding waveforms. So whenever we have a peak in the beginning and a peak in the end, 
the value becomes higher. But when we have only one peak in the waveform, we have a lower value. And that's the value we want to save because the other, because of, of this phenomenon, it's reading uh, unreliably high. So just by looking at the waveform now, they can disregard these three measurements and save this one and then repeat um, to take more measurements and only save the reliable ones. So this is a trick um, that is good to know about because I think quite a few people measure um, unnecessarily high doses on CT machines because of this. So in this case, you would recommend to go for the one that says bottom, which has the lowest reading here. So, so in this case, uh, we have we measured in the four positions. So I, I took this as an example. So the bottom one is the one I would save. But so I would take four, three new exposures: one at the top, and one at the right, and one at the left. And I would only save them when I have one peak in the waveform, Correct. because I still want to make four measurements. But on the other hand, the reason for averaging the four peripheral holes is the uncertainty of this measurement. Yeah. So when you can figure out that you're accurate in your estimation or your measurement of the dose, then it might be enough to only measure one peripheral hole. It depends on, on how the couch interferes with your measurements. But this way, you don't have to do like this company did, uh, five measurements and, and taking the, the lowest one. You can figure it out by the waveform, which value you can trust. OK, so now we'll have a look at CTDI uh, measurement report and how we create that from, from measured data. So. The X2 uh, unit stores and, and measures, yeah, measures data and it's stored automatically. But when you connect it to a computer, you can have our Race FU software on the computer and that will receive the data from the X2. The Race FU software can export it to Excel. And in Excel, we have uh, a few templates available on our website. And that you can download and use. And one of them is a CTDI Excel template. So looking at the flow, we have the X2 where we can measure and analyze. Uh, we can send the data to Race view, either live during a measurement or afterwards. And the Race view can either export live to, to Excel or after a measurement. So uh, in the Excel template, uh, we will calculate CTDI and, and you can use that as a report. The Excel templates that we have are example templates, so you can uh, just unlock them. There is no password and you can just change them for whatever you want and just use uh, the calculation hook that we have provided. So. Race if you software, you can download from the race race.com. Uh, it's free of charge and there's no registration. Uh, once downloaded and installed, you can click on file in race if you. And then from within race if you, you can download Excel templates from from Internet. Here is where you find the CTDI Excel templates. Uh, you can also download it directly from our website. So the Excel templates are also free of charge uh, and they are locked, but, but not with passwords. So you can unlock them uh, and edit them and build them any way you like them yourself. So for instructions and help, um, the X2 base unit, if you click on the menu button, you get the little menu. 
the help button is hiding the full user manual. So here you have chapters for each sensor and, and different topics for each sensor. So this is good to know. Um, Raise a view, same thing. Within the software, you have the help button. If you click on raise a view help, you have the full user manual for the software. If we then take a look at the CTDI Excel templates, it will open in an overview window um, where you have several sheets. One of the sheets are the procedure sheets where the measurement procedure and the steps are explained to you. So now jumping to the template itself. So this is one of the measurement sheets in the Excel template. Here we have first a uh, number of rows for, for body phantom measurements and then number of rows for head phantom measurements. We have a bread right field that is screaming red, and it's because it wants to be filled in before anything else can happen. So let's do that. Beam width. So the number of slices times the thickness of the slices. Well, let's say we do 20 millimeter beam width. And this is, this you have to figure out from the seat machine, right? What beam width you actually run for your measurement is uh, the setting of the machine. Other settings that we now are missing from the machine is the KV and the mass. So let's fill them in as well. Let's say we do all KV stations on this machine, which is 80, 100, 120, and 140, and we do them all uh, for 300 MAS. So this little template helps us now with the first measurement. It's telling us to measure in the body phantom in the center hole. So let's place the sensor in the center hole, take the measurement. Then we take the next exposure in one of the other holes. And when you have taken all four holes, it will average the result into this field. Once all these five measurements are done, you will get the calculated CTDI value here. So let's see what it looks like when we populate this template completely. Okay, so first we have the center value. We have the four peripheral that has been averaged. And one third of that, together with two thirds of that, is the CTDI W. And here we have it for, for four different KV stations. And this is possible to measure and fairly easy to measure live. Populate this Excel template and measure at the same time. Just follow the instructions in this Excel template uh, and in the user manuals of the software and the base unit. Okay. So, this is getting very close to the end of our presentation. So, I will we'll just summarize what we talked about. We have talked about CT machines, but only the parts that relate to these measurements. We have talked about the X2 CT sensor, and we have talked about free and air measurements and CTDI measurements. And hopefully uh, throughout, we have tried to show how the X2 CT sensor can help you understand the CT machine and the measurement setup, uh, and quite a lot through the waveforms given by the instrument. And then we finalized uh, uh, with looking at a CTDI report in Excel template uh, from measurements of the next two.